And today we are talking about prosperity levels and housing within Age of Origins and why you need to make it a focus and what the benefits are. Let's break this down. So what is prosperity levels and why should you even care about it? I mean, I ask that same question to myself every single morning, but you need not answer that question yourself. If you click your little button up here, you see this little crown or trophy rather with the wreath around it. That is your prosperity icon. OK, so by clicking on that, you will be able to feed through into the prosperity level ranking that you currently own, which is based on your refugee limit. You see in the bottom half of the screen here, we will have our level. If we cycle all the way back to the beginning here, just to see what it looks like at the start, we'll compare it to what mine is at the moment at level 12. OK, so at level zero, you can see you have zero bonuses. As soon as you hit your first 200 refugees, you will start to earn various bonuses. You can see we've got bonuses to building speed, gathering speed, which is when you're out there gathering resources from various mines, either the elite mines that are in your alliance or the random mines that are out there on the world map. Attack boost, this applies to every area of the game, attacking wild monsters, engaging in Death's Iron Grip or Mother of Doom, you know, the Tyrannosaurus invasion event, all of the events, the attack boost and the HP boost count for that okay so all the way over to where i am currently which is at level 12 you can see it's gone from one percent all the way up to 12 percent where i'm at right now with a 60 percent gather speed bonus health boost and hp boost of sorry an attack boost of 17 percent now the top level you can reach currently is level 15 and you need to have 34,600 refugees in order to hit that platform and you can see you get a building speed bonus of up to 15%, which is quite significant, 75% gather speed boost, as well as a 20% boost to both attack and HP. So how do we increase our levels of prosperity? Well, it's to do with refugees. How do we earn additional refugees? Well, thank you for asking, YouTube. That's why I'm making this video. Essentially, we are able to proceed to the ruins. If you go through through your prosperity ranking, click that button, click the proceed to ruins. It will take you to local city ruins within explore. Refugee rescue is how we actually earn more refugees. See, explore to rescue more refugees for your city. Now, when I click on it right now, I'm getting this pop, pop up here. You can increase the prosperity limit from the following. Essentially, my refugee count it currently is completely maxed out. So if I go and try to rescue more refugees, there's no room within my city to accommodate those additional refugees. So if we hit the increase refugee limit, you can see we have got houses, houses in the northeastern section of our map or of our city. So currently, like I said, if we go over here, I am I am at 23,400 and my refugee limit is also 23,400. So I don't even have room for one refugee right now. If I were to actually, before we go into the upgrade section here, let's just hit the little I button on the housing here in the north wall. Use to turn refugees into citizens of your city. Upgrade to house more and more people. So currently, my refugee limit boost is at 3.9K for this level of house. It's at level 22. My capital city right now, the actual capital over here, as you can see, is level 23. So we could theoretically take this up to level 23. What will that actually do for us? What will it provide? It will provide us with an additional 300 um, maximum refugees that we can take in and convert into citizens. So it's a bit of a, a balancing act between going out there trying to get more refugees and then increasing your housing to accommodate more refugees, to turn them into citizens, to increase your prosperity, to get more resources, more health boosts, more attack boosts, etc., etc. It's quite a straightforward and, uh, and, and simple process, really. So as we can see, we can't actually get any more refugees, so I'm going to have to upgrade a house. Now, we're just going to power through here, get everything done here. For the purposes of this video, I do not recommend you guys start blowing gold on upgrading housing. It's not particularly worthwhile. Uh, so that has given us an additional 300 potential refugees that we can get in within our city. If you see here, if I try to upgrade my housing further, I actually can't because it is tied to the max level of your main hall. So it's always in your interest to be looking to push the level of your main hall as a priority. And then after you've finished upgrading your main hall, 
take a look at upgrading the other beneficial official buildings within your city. I'm talking about, you know, your additional farms, your mines, your iron mines, your medical bays, your officer training facilities, all that sort of thing, your factories. After you've finished upgrading your city hall, look to upgrade those other buildings. But in particular, it is very helpful to upgrade your housing too, so that you can actually take on more refugees. So let's quickly go over to the ruins. Now, we only briefly touched on it. Yes, you have to do the refugee rescue. Now, you can see there are various tiers of these events as well. Now, in order to beat these, you need to hit a certain power threshold, right? So you can see here, you need 2,000 battle power in order to uh, defeat that first tier. Once you've defeated one tier, you can actually proceed on to the next one provided, well, I mean, you can hit it no matter what, provided you beat the previous tier, but really you want to be paying attention to that power ranking just here to see whether or not you're actually able to beat it. Now you can see currently I am on Zombie Den uh, level eight. You see that it gives you refugees and it is what, 822,560 power. So if I was to go to explore, we can see that I currently have 879,000 as my total fleet power right now. So if I was to go and hit this, I would, without a doubt, be able to beat it. If I was to try and explore down here, which is 1.4 million, I'm not going to have too much of a good time whilst trying to do that. So always look to progress this because obviously the further down you go, the better off your rewards will be overall. So you can see over here, each adventure has its own exploration times limit. That's always two. Each challenge costs five mobility. So as long as you've got mobility in your uh, fleet, you'll be able to hit over. Levels must be unlocked in order, so you have to do the previous level in order to unlock the next level. But just because you have an option to do it doesn't mean you can. You need to have the battle power. The monster in the levels have complex battle formations. When you challenge them, you should pay attention to your own formation strategy. If you are victorious, you will earn random rituals. So I'm just going to send out my units now. Go send them out to explore. Taking about 30 seconds for my attack fleet to actually get there. Let's go ahead and just blow one of our fleet speed up so he can go along just a little bit quicker. I mean, look at him. He's looking fine and dandy there, just minding his own business, going off over to the ruins to explore for more refugees to take them back to our city. So once they arrive there, essentially it is just you will incur some level of injury and your fleet will return. So let's head back to our main base. We will have a few injured units, as you can see, not too many. Let's go ahead and recover those real quickly. Speed all that up. And then if we go ahead and check our monster report, you can see that we earned 3,000 refugees. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, we just earned essentially 6,000 refugees, but we only had room for 300. What happened to that excess? Well, apparently we just kicked them back out into the wild so they can fend for themselves in this zombie-ridden universe. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a shame, really. What I would really have to do is try to upgrade all of these buildings. If you see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six buildings here. If I'm gaining an additional 300 refugees per building, I'm only gaining space for an additional total 1,800. Right. So you can see the pace at which you can acquire additional refugees is severely limited by the level of your housing. The only real way to hit new tiers to get to the later tiers of um, of prestige is to keep on developing your city, all right? You will you should theoretically always be at that cap and looking to upgrade your housing. So I'm just going to queue up the next building because I want to be able to have some space. Oh, I'm a little bit low on the old Steelio. Uh-oh, I better go out and farm some steel and then we'll get back to it. Uh, but that's about it, guys. That is about it. I do feel like the benefits of going in and upgrading your prosperity are definitely worthwhile. Those benefits are permanent. So always look to try and keep your prosperity as high as possible. Just don't forget, you've got to upgrade your housing and you've got to upgrade your main hall in order to accommodate more and more refugees. All right, guys, let me know in the comments section down below. Was this video useful to you? If it was, let me know. What else would you like me to cover for Age of Origins? And I'll look to oblige. Peace out and Merry Christmas.